Hi there, I'm Jim. And I'm Claire. Let's talk teaching. Welcome to Let's Talk Teaching, a podcast from the Center for Teaching, Learning, and Technology here at Illinois State University. I'm Jim G. Joining me today, Dr. Claire LaMonica, our director. Hey, Claire. Hi, Jim. Hey, um, we're going to go back today and talk about something that I realize we've never actually done an episode on. Uh, now I'm scared. <laughs> I know. It, something very, very basic that we've talked about all the time, but we've never actually devoted an episode towards the concept of active learning. So I have a hard time believing this, that we haven't ever done an episode on we, this. I know yeah. that you've told me, and you're the man with the list, so I believe you, but it's just, we talk about it all the time. We, we do, and I think that that's one reason why it deserves its own episode, because what I'd like to do today is to really boil down and get to the essence of the definition of what it is. I had a lot of my own assumptions about what it was, and I think that it is something that is, it's a phrase that is so ubiquitous my favorite word, Yes. Uh, well documented on this podcast. It's so ubiquitous in teaching and learning circles um, that people are like, well, of course I have, I, I have yeah. my students engage in active it, learning. It's one of those buzzwords that's just lost its meaning. You know, mm-hmm. if you read any teaching philosophy, you read any, you know, listen to any podcast, and, you know, it's just out there. So every, it, it, it is ubiquitous. I was reminded of this recently from approaching teaching and learning from a different aspect, professional development, mm-hmm working with peers from other institutions to put on an event and we were soliciting calls for proposals and you know one of the things you know active learning we we want we want the participants the faculty members and the staff members who are going to these events to engage in active learning as well and so we asked how are you going to do that and the answers were rather interesting and not necessarily <laughs> co- completely reflective of active right. learning so i think that there has been an equivocation between this concept of active learning and good teaching, mm. which is which is not necessarily a bad thing, but I think we just tend to use them as synonyms now. Right. So of course I'm I'm a good teacher, so mm-hmm. therefore my students are actively learning. I'm, I must be using active learning. Right. Yeah. 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 And that's not necessarily the case. No, you know, and and that's really interesting the way you said that that oh, of course my students are are actively learning and um because they're not sleeping in class, right? right? <laughs> yeah, right. Because they're, they're, they're sitting there, or they're taking notes, or yeah, you know, or right. whatever. But um, and that that's really interesting to me because that maybe we should. Well, I don't know. I'm not going to try to rebrand anything. Let's just stick with active learning. And but this is something not that students do, but that faculty design. So okay, so that's an important. So I think that's yeah. where we have to start. We have to say, okay, this isn't something students are doing. We talk about active reading, uh-huh. which is you know something we expect students to do, mm-hmm. and I think active learning is something that we sort of almost force students to do. We mm-hmm. design and we design. Um, we we kind of trap them into doing exp- it, right? <laughs> yeah, right. We yeah. Uh, you know it's it, we it happens them into... by design. Yeah, yeah. In, in our classrooms. Yeah. So um, let's start by saying that um, D. Fink most recently, mm-hmm. but also people before him, have defined active learning as having three major components. The first component, well, and, and they, okay. So the first and the second component, even the third, they can happen in any order. Sure, okay? sure. So, so this, is not, a, this is not a hierarchy. It's not this a hierarchy, a, yeah. and it's not even necessarily a chronology. But the components are information and ideas, experiences, and reflection. Now, I would argue, and I think that Fink argues this as well, that we're much better at the first two, Mm -hmm. information and ideas. We're really good at information and ideas. Sure. Um, Experiences, we're pretty good at. Reflection is all too often the piece that gets left out, and yet... Going all the way back to Dewey, reflection is the piece that matters, you know, and, and Dewey is said to have said, we don't learn by doing, we learn by reflecting mm-hmm. on doing. Um, mm-hmm. And I, I haven't ever managed to track down that specific quote, but, um, you know, it, it's true. So you, taking up your challenge, because we had talked off, off mic, and, and I actually did go back and look at the ep- our past episodes, and I actually think reflection 
is the one component that we probably have talked about the most in our series. Well, of good. Episodes. Yeah, because and that and you know that makes sense because that's the one that we are constantly trying to promote yeah. uh, to get faculty to, to think about yeah. that. So, I, I'm actually so I just had a, a thought that you could almost see this um, not as three components but as as a cycle. That and a cycle that could be entered at any one of these points. So that's something I'm going to think about actually. Um, the act of I... learning merry go merry go round. Yeah, the or act like of that. learning merry go round. It just or depends on which like horse that. you jump on, and that's right. Yeah, we'll have to refine um, that metaphor because, a little yeah. bit. But, but, <laughs> we'll, yeah. we'll have to work on that. But right. I so let's go back. Let's so let's start because I started earlier with mm-hmm. information and ideas. Yeah. So we can start with that, and that's what we most often think of when we think of teaching. We mm-hmm. think we we often think of teaching as the process of exchanging information and ideas in one way or another. Um, So the very um, sort of traditional approach to teaching is what Freire calls the banking model, which is, you know, the the instructor has all the information and ideas and the students don't. And the instructor's job is to take those information and ideas, the information and ideas that she has and sort of plant them in the student's brain. Well, okay, <laughs> mm-hmm. that's not really how we think about that anymore because it's doesn't it, it's not necessarily how it, learning really works. But it's a way that a lot of us actually went through our own learning. It's a way. It's a way that many, most, if yeah. not that most, if not all of us, were taught. We had to go to some pretty unusual schools to have right. had other different, right. other kinds of experiences. And so it still persists because we we tend sure. to do what we what we because we teach as we were taught. There's yes. tons of workshop, tons of research that shows that. Yeah. So information ideas. This is you know this can happen in a lot of different ways, which is also something that we don't always think about. Mm-hmm. So. If we do, in fact, and there is, in fact, foundational information that students need to grasp before they can move on. That information might be presented in a lecture. Mm -hmm. It might be presented in a reading. It might be presented in a podcast. Mm -hmm. It might be presented in a video, lots of different ways of presenting ideas and information to students at a very basic level. Mm -hmm. It can happen during class. It can happen in their dorm rooms as they read their assignment. It can happen online as they watch watch a a video or Mm -hmm. a webinar. So that's, that's kind of the the piece that we think about. Now, the problem is that research shows us that just giving students that information, and even when students can spit that inf- can successfully spit that information right. back at us, right. doesn't mean that they've internalized it or used it or changed their existing mental models to incorporate it or that it's become any, it has had any long term effect. Mm-hmm. What we know from the research, I'm, I, I can't make this stuff up, folks, okay? <laughs> what we know from the research mm-hmm. is that students will more deeply understand, they will more successfully internalize, they will be changed more by information and ideas that are incorporated into experiences, Mm -hmm. So this is the second piece. Mm -hmm. And in order to be actually transformed by learning or by an idea, students need to have some experience that reinforces, puts into play. You know, there has to be something... They need to do something. They need to do, hence active learning, right? Right. They need to do something. Yeah, they need to do something with the information. They need to do it. Yeah. Watching it yeah. might help also. Uh-huh. These experiences can be actual. They can be simulated. Mm-hmm. So we watched, we had some visitors recently uh, here at CTLT, and, and one of them was actually from a publisher. He was a publisher's mm-hmm. rep. And he mm-hmm. gave a demonstration of this virtual dissection of a, uh, okay. of a human cadaver. 
Okay. Okay. So this is a thing. You know, yeah. cadavers are expensive. Not yeah. all schools have have access to cadavers. Um, this was right after lunch, wasn't it? It was. It was correctly. right after lunch. It was. It was also, as I said in the meeting, it was yeah. the reason I'm an English major. Yeah. But it was. But yeah. it wasn't. You know, he didn't have an actual cadaver there. But the right. students were simulating the dissection of an actual cadaver. It was right. almost too realistic. Yeah. So, for example, the, the College of Nursing has a great simulation lab mm-hmm. where the mm-hmm. students can go in and practice on uh, dummies, dummy patients, right. you know, right. that um, pretend patients yes. yeah. that yeah. look very human. Mm-hmm. Um, they look kind of dead, but they look very human, and right. they um, they do all sorts of things. And they give you know? responses. They, can, they, they give. They have they, a pulse, they, they and they have give all that. Birth, you know. They yeah. They so you can have simulated experiences. But but, but an experience in, in terms of an active in terms of active learning, the experience doesn't have to be quite so grandiose, as it were. It doesn't have to right. be high tech. No. No, it can right. be, it, it may just be, you know, it may be practicing equations, right. practicing right. solving equations. Right. That's that's yeah. as low tech as I can get to. In, in right. my classrooms, it means sitting down at a computer and writing. It's not that I don't ever give them any information. Sure. I, I do present them with lots of information about you know, what is an audience? What are some ways we can tailor writing to an audience? And although I do that in a in a more um, constructivist manner. But anyway, those yeah. are... Yeah. But the actual experience is sitting down and trying to create a text that's tailored to a specific audience. So, so it's doing something beyond just being tested on your knowledge. Yes. Yes. Um, it's, a, it's, it's an authentic right. experience, putting right. that into practice somehow. So those are the first two components. Right. The third component... Uh, which uh, Fink says has been neglected, and yet which Dewey said was, you know, really the essence mm-hmm. of learning is this reflection piece, mm-hmm. and that can mean a number of different things. Um, it may mean reflecting on what you've learned. It may mean, in some cases, reflecting on how you learned it. Mm-hmm. That can be very instructive for students. It may be something that students do on their own. It could be it could be a one minute paper at the end of class. Right. It could be a reflection on their writing process at the end of a at the end of a unit. It could be um, a whole class conversation. You know, I'm I'm kind of a proponent of at the end of the semester before the evaluations come out, right. having a whole class conversation about hey. What have we learned this semester? Right. And sort of, you know, creating a, a massive something on your right. whiteboard or well, whatever. Well, t- so as we're recording this, I'm, I have my final class period for the semester tonight, and we're going to have pizza, and we're going to have their oh, final can projects. I come? Um, <laughs> no, you're, you're welcome to come, but you're going to have to fight because I'm only getting one ham and pineapple pizza. Uh, this has been a, this has been a source of de- debate all semester <laughs> about whether or not this is actually a good thing or not. Okay. Uh, but um, I, I gave in and said, I'll... I'll for those of you who, who want this abomination, I'm more than happy to, you know, um, I take no responsibilities for suborning your... Your, 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 <laughs> your palate. Your palate, right. Um, but one thing I want to do tonight is, so they, they've recently taken a test, and I, I, got, I got the... They do an essay exam, mm-hmm. and I want to talk about some of the common themes that they wrote about that they may not have realized was as common. So we'll talk about that. But then I also copy and pasted the learning outcomes for the mm-hmm. course from the syllabus into my little notes, and we're going to put that up, and we're going to talk about, hey, you know, this is what we were supposed to be doing. How Did we do this? Did we do yeah. this? Do you know yeah. of examples of it? You know, we, we've emphasized here at CTLT and certainly on our podcast, we've emphasized this concept of reflection quite a lot. It's been the theme or related very closely to the theme of our annual symposium for mm-hmm. uh, more than one, uh, on more than one occasion. But the reflection itself you have to have something upon which to reflect, right? So when we're talking about a basic definition, right. you have to have had that informational portion and the experiential portion in order to have a true reflection. There had to have been something that you did with something. Right. Or you might start the active learning process by with a reflection on prior knowledge. So we can tweak this in a lot of different ways, mm-hmm. um, but the main thing is not how we tweak it or what order we do these things in or whatever, but that we include all three of these 
of these components. Right. And the other thing that we need to remember, and I know we've said this in other podcasts, but I'm going to say Mm -hmm. it again now, is that students are not naturally reflective thinkers. Just to say to them, hey, write a little reflection piece about what you learned during this unit. That's -hmm. that's not going to help. They need more guidance than that. And Mm -hmm. there are some, I'm sure we have talked in other episodes about um, some sort of templates for promoting reflection. Sure. Sure. Um, and if we haven't, then that could be our next time. Well, we, we might do, we <laughs> yeah. might, well, we'll, we'll yeah. certainly link to what we can in the right. show notes for this, uh, for this uh, episode. And then we yeah. can, uh, you know, we, we always revisit these topics, uh, yeah. which is important. Um, you know, and I'm thinking that the experience aspect of a- a- active learning, now that I think about how do I introduce assignments to students, that might be one I'm kind of missing on. You know, I'll, oftentimes I'll pose them a question about how do you think, you know, what, what makes for a good speech? Or what, you know, what makes for a good email, you know, something because I'm teaching communication. So Mm -hmm. something along those lines. But just having them go up and try something. And and then we talk about the foundational, the the knowledge behind that. Yes. Okay. Here's here's why this was hard because you may not know. Right. And 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 then and then you know yeah. so yeah I mean I you know this. having students tr- try something and fail is a great that's a great well, that's way a great, yeah. to sort of provide some impetus for learning right yeah. so if they do if they try the experience first right and then find that they the results aren't what they were hoping for then that's a natural entree to that information yeah. and ideas yeah now you know you you can get them asking questions mm-hmm. and you can really so you once again you can start this at any point mm-hmm. um, in the process it's it's the interweaving of these elements that that produces transformations and, and changes students mental models Claire thank you so much thank you Jim. And that's all the time we have for this week's episode of Let's Talk Teaching. You can find out more about our podcast and about active learning and all these other things that we've talked about today by going to our website, ctlt.illinoisstate.edu. For Dr. Claire LaMonica and for all my colleagues here at the Center for Teaching, Learning, and Technology, until we talk again, happy teaching.